please note that each human being is unique. For further understanding of the subject matter, please be advised to consult your preferred healthcare professional. And uh, the conversation that we're getting into uh, this evening is quite interesting. And I just want to hear how you know you get to you know to to, to tackle this one because you know it, it it involves what you do. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, we're talking uh, codependency. You know, uh, a situation where a person can be dependent on something overly too much. And in this case, we're talking therapy because I was asking myself, okay, does it happen? Is it a thing that actually gets to, uh, you know, to, to happen? And this also was just sparked by a conversation that I was having with, you know, with, with another person within your field. Uh, we're just having a conversation. I was just trying to find out. And, you know, then I was like, oh, yeah, that's a very interesting thing to, to look at. So, yeah, um, as a patient, uh, is there a situation where you as the therapist can pick up? Or you know what? Hey, I think here we have a problem in terms of, yes, I'm helping this person, but they tend to be a bit too dependent on the sessions that uh, we get to have. What's the situation? Yes, Uh, definitely that does happen. But I think before we get into uh, describing the scenario, we should first define what codependency is Mm -hmm. uh, so that we have a proper grasp at Uh, the issue that we're dealing with as we bring in the scenario. And basically, codependency is a situation where an individual's own emotions rely heavily on the emotions of other people or another person around them. And usually the reason for this happening is that a person wasn't taught, wasn't conditioned to understand the value of their own their own emotions. So they become overly uh, concentrated on the emotions of other people. When a child is growing up, they express emotions. And the another role of the caregiver, or one of the roles of a caregiver, is to validate this child's emotions, is to show them that their emotions are important, they are valuable, and the presence of them demands some some kind of action or some kind of uh, validation primarily. And when Mm -hmm. a child doesn't get that, um, they become confused. And usually the response to that uh, void is that they start to over-prioritize the emotions of other people. So that's what usually breeds for a person to become a codependent kind of person. Now, this kind of person, when they come in for therapy, it is a risk that they can also bond with the therapist in a codependent manner. How? That they now become reliant on their progress or measuring their progress based on how the therapist feels. So usually you find that this is the kind of person who continues in therapy uh, for the sake of the therapist, to impress the therapist, to make Mm. the therapist happy. And you see that on its own makes their own healing or their own therapy become second priority of them actually going there. So the whole process then becomes undoing. Wow. Now, as a person who is, you know, helping this person deal with whatever situation they're dealing with and you pick this up, uh, what's like uh, the breakdown to them, Hori? Because obviously, like, Hori, as, as, as a person, as the therapist, you, you have to find a nicer way or an easier way of, of breaking it down to them. Just, you know, give us a scenario of how then one would go about, you know, uh, just breaking down to this person depending on whatever situation that they may be. Well, um, of course, it's um, about investigating how the individual relates with the people in their environment, um, Mm. the kind of interactions that they have, how much do they show value on their emotions. When they relate a story and something has happened, do they focus much on finding their own fault? Do they focus much on uh, other people being or having the capacity to acknowledge their own emotions? Usually when a person is unable to do that, usually when a person focuses much uh, on other people's feelings and, you know, usually finds a way to find fault in themselves, it is usually an indicator that they don't value much um, their own feelings, their own emotions. They place others on top of that. And that could be an easy thread to pull at to realize Uh, where that started, uh, usually in childhood, um, sometimes through to teenage and even early early 
adulthood it still um, um, continues but the idea is to find that um, f- to find that thread that this individual has gone through most of their life without having anybody present in their environment to validate their emotions and even if there was one or two people but the constant the the the, the the bulk <laughs> of yeah. their interaction uh, is usually outward facing um, in terms of their emotions. They usually determine their own emotions by how other people feel. All right. So this this would uh, require the person, the therapist in this case, to to just do uh, further investigations. Well, uh, very interesting, you know, because uh, you know we 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 if, when we talk uh, right here on the show, you know, we're talking about how important therapy is, uh, and you know just. Uh, this scenario as well just you know throwing a bit of a curveball i guess because uh, i take it also is not just people who let's say grew up uh, being overly codependent on other people i believe as well as a person who just uh starts you know therapy at whatever stage because of whatever situation they too also can develop some uh, sense of codependency depending on mm. what's driving it around them at the time on the therapist mm. Yeah, relationship dynamics as well um, can also play a role in that. Uh, The quality of therapists, like you just mentioned, uh, can also play a role in that. Unfortunately, we do have certain therapists who validate the quality of their own work uh, by how heavily uh, their clients rely on them. But relationship dynamics as well have a critical role to play in this because some relationships are dysfunctional to the point where proving um, that they are that people uh, really care about each other or they're into the relationship, um, they kind of overly rely on each other or their, their, their lives become in a way intertwined to the point where the individuals no longer have any sense of independence. And when that happens, it becomes very dangerous because mm. it, it normalizes that kind of behavior. It normalizes that um, to an individual that you can't make any decisions without consulting with another person. You can't determine how you feel without consulting with another person. You can't uh, really essentially do anything without the involvement of another person. And that can introduce the the dynamic of codependency in a person, and that can be carried out onto other relationships. Oh, interesting, because I take it you know this you know there are many uh, different scenarios, uh, you know, in relation to another you know, this codependency, you know, situations where I guess sometimes people around that person can realize you know hey this person is heavily dependent on this person, and the uh, way court orders have to be brought in, maybe the therapist say yeah you know uh, sign off half of your fortune to me or convince them in a way and all these things so yeah uh i take it you know that that's why we also (laughs) have to have this type of conversation as well yeah when you say that you actually remind me of a movie that um i once watched of one young lady who did that she would identify um old rich people Mm -hmm. and convince them to make her the beneficiary of their riches when they pass on through uh, manipulating them through uh, using these codependent tactics. Wow, interesting. And I take it this is also just uh, highlights how it it, it is important for uh, therapists and counselors to also have uh, sessions for themselves because, you know, some of this codependency uh, can be because of, like you explained, or how maybe like, the therapist, uh, they are also drawn into it because they probably feed from that energy as well. And, uh, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, interesting, that's interesting, true. you know, that's interesting true. conversation right here. Let's uh, if a person would want to get a bit of understanding as to what we're talking about, the subject matter and everything, how can they get in touch with you? All right. So you can find me on social media, on Facebook and on LinkedIn at Litakota Alternative. You can reach out to me on my cell phone number on 72383085. Love's Lounge.